This is a uh, just a quick video about powering up unknown devices. I picked this up the other day on eBay. It's a uh, just an old kind of pin pad unit. It's it's kind of locked out, at, um, so I'm not really going to be able to do much with it other than just have a quick look. But um, I need to find out how to power it up. There's uh, a few kind of manuals for these types of devices online, but nothing. I, I couldn't find anything matching this particular unit. And so I need to find the kind of power rails to do that. The, the other end of the, the lead is just a little um, a kind of DIN style connector. There's nothing obvious on there. But, um, the, the data sheets of the other devices seem to suggest a voltage ranges of maybe 7.5 volts, possibly 9 volts. Um, so I've got a starting point there. But I do need to find out what connections to use. This has got six pins here. It's got the black and red and various different other colours to work with. And the, the best point to kind of for, for working out which connections here are going to be power and which are going to be data is to kind of match up with what's on the board. Now the, the simplest one to find is usually ground. So you kind of look for kind of common ground planes and things like that, something that's going to have a share this kind of common connection. You can then kind of probe each of the terminals here and using a kind of a multimeter and look for continuity between whatever probe, whichever connection you're testing and the obvious ground plane. I mean, in the case of this device here, there is, uh, there is no obvious kind of ground plane. There's nothing kind of big and standing out. These screws on the board here, there's nothing, there's no copper around those to make it obvious. So that's um, a little bit harder in this case. The, so I went for the positive rail first. And this chip here, next to this diode here, this is probably going to be um, some kind of input uh, kind of power regulation. And so I looked up this device here, and it's just a variable uh, low dropout voltage regulator. And it turns out uh, input is, uh, I believe it was on kind of pin 3 at the end. And so that's going to be the positive power input. So from there, I can test each terminal and find out which one connects to that. In the end, it turned out to be red, which is pretty common, which as he was expecting. And so red is definitely the positive input for this device. And so I then went switched over to the ground terminal. This is a, uh, a variable voltage regulator, so it doesn't have a, a ground input, or not a straight ground anyway. So I kind of took a look over at this chip here. This is uh, the RS kind of 232 kind of controller, and it'll be kind of feeding these other output lines. But so if, you, if you look at the data sheet, there's, it has a kind of a positive and negative input, a power input. And so I can use the ground input on here as the kind of reference for checking out pins. And so the first one I checked was the black. I mean, if someone was wiring this up, you're going to pick red and black for power. But in this case, it wasn't. Black had absolutely no connection to the negative pin there. And you kind of work your way through, and it turned out to be uh, blue in this case. And so the blue connection here wired through to the ground pin on that chip. And so based on that, we've got a fairly kind of good idea that red and blue are going to be the power lines. And so from there, you can then hook it up and test some voltages. So I've got a, just a basic little bench power supply here. I'm going to connect this up now. So negative onto blue in this case, and positive onto red. Keep these other lines apart and separate. Nothing to go wrong there. So I'm going to turn this off first. I mean, the the initial uh, day suggested it was going to be kind of possibly seven and a half volts, possibly uh, nine volts. But uh, a safe starting point is going to be five. I mean, logic devices tend to be kind of three point three five volts, that kind of thing. There is a voltage regulator on the input line and a diode, and this is a kind of consumer equipment designed to be shifted around, so it's going to have some kind of a inbuilt regulation and protection, so 5 volts seemed like a decent starting point. And so you can power up the device here, and it uh, boots straight up. Now it's quite possible it does run at a higher input voltage normally. The, the voltage regulator inside will take care of that, but for my needs, 5 volts here is more than enough. And uh, being a pin pad, it is uh, kind of coming up with this security warning. I mean, these have um, multiple kind of protections in to detect tampering. 
and even just moving this back cover here has released this contact which couples up with a uh, pin on the other side of the case and so it knows if you tamper with these devices so I'm almost certainly not going to get anything out of this but it's interesting to have a look and do a little bit of uh, a kind of checking out some data sheets and parts I can at least find the starting point for working with a device like this.